Welcome back, YouTube uh, vinyl community. That's Mark Mai here again. Um, this is Vinyl Finds um, number 12. First one was uh, part one, so we'll make this one part B. Um, we already went through Savers. Um, I stopped at AM Vets. I uh, had a lot of good luck there. Uh, last time I went there, um, they, I hate when they do this, but they kind of went through with a garbage can, and if it was in bad condition, if it had been sitting there for a while, they chuck them. I hate to see that, um, you know, I mean, it's somebody's going to want them some somewhere, you know, someone's looking for something that they just threw out. Maybe, uh, maybe not, but I still, I just, I hate to see him throw a bunch of stuff out. So, uh, there wasn't really much there. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Drink here. Um, it's uh, white cranberry and peach, and I put a little pomegranate in there. Very good. Uh, but anyway, so... Uh, but this time I went, they, man, they were full. They were they, they chock full of stuff, a bunch of stuff I had never seen there before. A bunch of, um, uh, you know, just, well, lots, lots of people dropping off stuff there, which is good. Um, you know, that's one of the things I liked about going to some of these thrift shops. Um, they're, they're terrible organizations behind it, so I feel like I'm... Uh, you know, helping out a little bit by buying a bunch of records from them. Anyway, so um, there was a box there, um, a ton of, well, not a ton, a bunch of uh, command records in there, and everybody knows I, I love my commands. Um, trying to grow my collection. Um, someday I'll have the entire catalog, maybe. Uh, I know when I first started out, it was so easy, I mean, because I didn't have anything. I was t finding a ton of it. Now I find a ton of it still, but it's all stuff that I have already. So I was happy to find some uh, some stuff that I didn't have. I don't have a whole lot of Command Classics. Uh, I probably uh, tripled or even quadrupled my collection of classics with this latest find. Alright, so the first one is actually Magnavox Presents Command. It's a Magnavox record. It's not actually a Command record, but kind of thought it'd be neat to have it. Um, it does feature all the command, not all the command, but all the selections are from command records, uh, all of which I already have on the records, but it kind of is neat for two reasons. It features command, so it works with that collection, but it's also an advertising piece, and I love advertising pieces. I actually have a really cool advertising piece I'll show you later uh, in, uh, let's see, um, part one, part B, Roman numeral three, uh, my my uh, video, Roman numeral three. All right, so um, this is like I said. Here is the advertising part. It's on the inside, and uh, it says revolutionary new Magnavox Astrosonic Stereo High Fidelity. I love the names, but uh, it actually has here a picture of a console unit. Um, there's some stuff on uh, the different types of uh, tubes that are used, speakers. It shows here a turntable that would be in the council unit and everything. Very cool. I, I like it. Uh, the back doesn't look so great. Got a little water damage here. Uh, these are probably in someone's basement. You know, Grandpa died, and what are we going to do with those records? They throw them in the basement. On, on the, some of the classics, uh, you'll see there's, uh, it's quite obvious they got water on them, but it's okay. It's a start for me, at least now I have them, and uh, I can clean them up a little bit and uh, work with that. All right, first one, uh, again, these are 35 millimeter stereo. Um, Beethoven Symphony Number no. 4 in B flat. Uh, this is with uh, William uh, Steinberg and Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra. Um, 
actually all of them I noticed going through them are uh, the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra ones. So, but uh, the back sides, pretty plain. But I mean, they're they're really sturdy, durable. This is very tough, thick. Uh, cardboard might even be some other material in there um, that uh, to protect the record because it's a gatefold but as you can see the record comes out in this direction and as you can see here this is what I'm talking about a little bit of dirt water damage it looks like there uh, I've taken the record out the record looks pretty good so I'm, I'm happy with that because that's to me that's what I'm after I'm after the music I'm after the record the uh, covers I like them in nice condition, don't get me wrong, but um, they're almost secondary to me um, than the music. So This one is Wagner Preludes and Overtures. And this one is really nice. Look at how nice and clean this one is. So uh, I'm happy with this one, definitely, for sure. I also love the, the cover art on some of these. Um, that one is kind of a real abstract, swirly thing, and this one is some flowers, probably was an oil painting of some sort at one time. This is the Unfinished Symphony Number no. 8 in B minor, and Symphony Number no. 3 in D. And this one here, as you can see, I was saying, um, down there, I'm going to have to get some Lysol, I'll clean that up, clean up this side, yeah, I think that's actually mold. So. We'll get that fixed up. I'm going to wash my hands after this video. Brahms Symphony No. 2 in D, Opus 73. Beethoven Symphony No. 7 in A, Opus 92. Love that one. That's definitely a watercolor there. And last one, this one is kind of really in bad shape. Even the front cover here shows uh, shows a little bit of something going on there. Bolero and um, Rhapsody hmm, Espanol by Ravel. Oh. This one actually is the Orchestra de Concerts Cologne. So this one is not with the uh, Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra. So that's that. Those are the ones that I picked up, uh, the classical and the commands there. Um, then I also picked up um, um, from eBay. I, I had gone on Father's Day over to my father's house and I took some records. And I also took my little portable radio, uh, portable turntable Last time I was over, he was having some issues. Um, for some reason, he couldn't get his turntable to to play. Uh, all, you know, everything was turned on, everything's lit up. Um, he's got a couple buttons. He's got actually got set up for uh, two different speakers. You can have just two speakers on or four speakers on. So um, they're they're pushed. Everything's, but yet you drop the needle. You turn up the volume, you can hear the buzz. You got it on, that's for sure. But you dropped the needle and just nothing was coming out. So um, he actually um, was goofing around with it. And by Father's Day, he had it up and running. And uh, so I came over with some records. Hey, Dad, look what I got. He says, oh, wait, look what I got. You know, So he's, he's showing me up. Um, he still he still buys records and he goes uh, you know, you know he, he actually goes uh, a total different route he he likes to go to yard sales and estate sales and stuff like that um, so he he showed me up well one of the things that he played for me I, I went out on eBay and I was searching for because I wanted it for myself too um, so I got it. Uh, but in addition to that, I bought a couple other things. So, um, this first one, uh, Herbie Mann. This is on Atlantic. Uh, this is called Mississippi Gambler. And this is one of three records I bought um, from a, a dealer out there. He always sends them with uh, the plastic on them. 
in a nice little plastic sleeve. They're always in great shape. When he when he mails them, um, they're in the mailer. There's an extra cardboard in there, um, and then the the albums are actually not in the sleeve. He, he mails them outside the sleeve like that. Um, this is his card down here. I just noticed that. Um, so that's a good one. Can't wait to listen to that. I love her being here. Uh, this one is called Accordion Fantasy. Just one. Um, and this is on uh, uh, Spinorama. And, and here is actually, I don't know if you can see that. It says Peace and Love, Jeff. Little thing in there. And this, this is probably. Uh, Oh, no. oh no. Yeah, it's my uh, my invoice here, and then he's got a, a listing of all his other sales. Hey. And the card is in there again, too. He likes putting his card in there. But uh, I took it out so you could see the cover there. And this is... Uh, you'll, you'll notice this is the... The theme. My father plays accordion, so when I went over, a lot of what he was playing was accordion music. So it got me thinking about it, too. <coughs> so, uh, it's a pretty nice one. So, a jazz accordion has always uh, been a thing of mine. Like I said, my father played accordion. So even when he wasn't spinning records that were jazz accordion players, he was in the kitchen with his amplifier and you know, tape recorder. He used to arrange music for his own group, and he would be practicing and hear him play the same song over and over and over and over and over just to make sure you get it right, you know. Another accordion player, Art Van Dam. Um, this one's called Accordion a la Mode. And this is a Columbia 6i. Very cool. Um, I have a lot of his stuff and this one I was actually planning on getting anyways because uh, this is one I don't have, but now I do. And this is on, you know, I said Columbia. <clears throat> and this is the one. This is the one that I was actually after. My father, when he was a kid, um, showed an interest in playing the accordion. He was, um, I mean, it was strapped onto him from morning, noon, and night. He played in school. He played after school. Um, where my grandparents lived, um, there was a VFW post um, that backed their property and my father used to go out with a little chair and a little cup and he'd be sitting there playing and the guys go into the VFW post they'd have a couple of drinks or whatever something to eat and then they'd come out and smoke cigarettes and they'd be listening to my father playing and they'd throw some money for him and, and it just took off from there well this is actually one of my father's accordion teachers when he was in high school and even afterwards, my, uh, my father and I also took uh, jazz theory lessons from this guy. Uh, Accordion in the Modern Mood, featuring Russ Messina. And this is on Accordia Records from Oakland, California. And he's, a, he's a local guy here in Buffalo. Um, or was. He's passed away now. But this is one of his records. Very few of these still running around. And uh, my father picked one up at a garage sale and we listened to it and I was like, oh my god, that's awesome. I've got to get it. I went and I looked out on eBay and sure enough there was one. And it is in just fantastic condition. Uh, I'm just stoked to have it. Um, I never thought I would actually have one of Russ's um, albums because they are so rare and you know he's like I said a local guy he's not even really like nationally known uh, so I'm so excited to have it all right so that's it that's part B um, look for Roman numeral three it's coming up next